Oh, we're not waiting for a quorum. We were just waiting for... Yeah, we're good. Okay, everybody, we're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. And we're going to start with prayer from Representative Barton, and don't we need it? Representative Barton. Can you hear me? All right, bow your head, please. Dear Heavenly Father, be with us today as we do the work of the state. Help us in this last week as well. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. I, I'd like to start by recognizing Jackson. Jackson, will you stand up, please? We've, represent, we've recognized you before, but I know Chairman Jasper specifically wanted me to make sure that we, we told you again, thank you so much for your work that you've done here as an intern. I hope it's been a valuable experience to you and, and hope that uh, we can, I know we can look forward to seeing great things out of you in the future. So thank you so much for being here this, this session with us. All right, and also we have a new member on our committee who was just sworn in last Wednesday. That is Representative Gary Richardson. And um, if you, so happy you're here on this committee. It's one of the best committees you could have been, been assigned to. So if you would like to introduce yourself and say a few words, go right ahead. That, that microphone right there. Yes, thank you very much. I'm Gary Richardson. I represent District 125, Columbia, part of Columbia and McDuffie counties, and uh, I'm just uh, very thankful with the warm support and outreach from everybody so far. Uh, I was sworn in last Wednesday, and uh, it's been somewhat, no, not somewhat, very overwhelming, but everyone has offered uh, to help and answer questions or do whatever, and I'm just... Uh, very grateful to be a part of the House and working with everyone. Thank you. We are very grateful to have you here. Okay, um, first order of business today, since we are waiting for um, some bill presenters to arrive, is we're going to begin with Amber Clark with the Georgia Airports Association. And you should have there with you several handouts. Either have them or they're coming your way that you can refer to during her presentation. And I will, yeah, right over here. And I will let you know we're, we're on a little bit of a time crunch since we had started late and we've got rules coming in at two. Um, but we do look forward to hearing from you and we know this is uh, a report you've been working very hard on, so thank you for being here. Okay. A. Uh, and the director of the Columbus Airport. I also have with me Andrew Wiersma, who's our past president, and he's our legislative committee chair, and also the manager of the Dalton Airport. First, we just wanted to say thank you so much to this committee and to everyone who um, has helped increase the funding this year and the budget for airports. State funding is integral in maintaining and developing our Georgia airports. And this funding, this increased funding, will help repair runways, upgrade lighting, and install uh, wildlife fencing. So there's so many other projects that are going to be able to be done because of this funding. So we just want to say thank you so much. All these projects will foster a safer airport and provide future growth for our airport as well. I'd like to introduce our association a little bit. So we are the Georgia Airports Association, or known as GAA. We were founded in 1990, and we also have, uh, we are for the development and growth and empowerment of all airports. And we also advocate for federal and state funding, as well as legislative changes to ensure that our airports uh, continue to be safe and efficient. And why is it important that we support all airports? And that's because we are a network or a system that helps foster not only state growth, but regional and national growth. So I got a, a little bit of a fact sheet here. We do have 103 airports uh, that are state funded here in the state of Georgia. 71% of those airports are actually GAA members. All eight commercial service are members, as well as 68% uh, of the 95 general aviation airports. I'd like to give some facts that this committee itself represents 26 of our Georgia airports, 25 general aviation airports, and one commercial airport. 
for a total economic impact annually of $4.8 billion. So thank you for representing those airports. The need for airport projects and improvements every year is very costly. Um, so we again just want to reiterate, thank you so much for the additional funding that we received in the budget this year. Um, you can see that we're comparable to some of our regional states as well. Um, so that's a great increase for us. But we just want to remind everybody that these projects are continuously going to be costly. And so we're going to look at that funding um, level going forward as well. So it's not just a one-time increase that's needed. Last week uh, at the intermodal committee meeting, GDOT did give a presentation um, on the hangar study. So we've got a couple slides that we just kind of want to touch base on. Um, so this is just kind of shows the need for hangars. Hangars is a, a revenue generator at our airports. So this slide kind of shows a geographical need for those hangars. Um, the need is 1,400 additional hangars here in the state of Georgia. And you can see that equates to about $450 million in construction cost. 50%, 57% were actually outside of the state looking to base here in Georgia. So that's a great economic impact for our state. We know that there is a conversation about a, a loan program here, and we are excited about that. This uh, gives some information about states that use a total loan program to fund hangers, and then those who use grants and those who use a combo. So we do have 10 states here that use actual a loan program, and eight of them use a grant program, and seven actually use a combo of the two. Ms. Clark. Yes, I can interrupt you quickly. Oh, sorry. You did have a question? Rep. Mathis? OK. Um, well, if any of you do have a question at any point, just, just hit your button, and, and we'll just take questions as we go. How about sure. That, that okay. sounds great. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. So um, we did put out a survey to our members and asked, um, based on their current financials and budgets, what could they uh, support successfully in regards to hangar funding? And so we asked, is it 100% loans? Is it a 50-50 grant loan program? Is it some kind of combination or other? We actually had 45 airports respond back to that survey. And you can kind of see where their spread was. So it looks like the majority are saying that they successfully could do a 50-50% uh, loan grant program. Um, but we had a few that did say they could do 100% loans. So we'll continue to gather that information and bring it back to the committee. OK, you have a question, uh, Floor Leader McDonald. Yes, uh, question. Look, explain a, what a hanger is. And the reason I'm asking is I did the 450 million divided by 1,400 and come, I came up with $321,428 for one hanger. That seems a, really high for a, a T hanger. So, so we'll need the study to come out to be able to show more in depth what they're talking about, but there are different types of hangers. So they're not all gonna be necessarily T hangers. There may be some that are box hangers. We'll need the um, actual study to kind of break that down for you, but there are different types of hangers. So just taking that and dividing it may not be representative of the actual need. Yeah. And the, a hangar, so for anybody who may need to know, a hangar is um, a facility where you would park an aircraft inside to maintain it, keep it safe from the weather, different conditions of that nature, kind of like a garage would be for your car. It would be the same thing for a hangar. And it could be rented by an individual. It could be rented by a small business. It could be a corporation. So there's a lot of different reasons um, somebody may need a hangar. Even flight schools tend to keep some of their aircraft in hangars. So it depends on the different needs of the individual of what type of hangar they would need. Did that answer your question? Okay. Right. Absolutely. Um, so we do want to continue to work with this committee going forward. We know there's a, a bill that's out about the loan program. And so this is kind of just a very high um, overarching recommendation based on some of our feedback from our members. Um, but we'd like to see maybe a, a scale for the, grant, for the loan program. Um, so for those who have better economic positions, maybe they could do 100% loans. For those um, with varying economic factors, uh, maybe a 50-50 or 75-25 um, or 90-10. So this is, again, just a high-level um, feedback from our members, and we'd really like to continue this conversation throughout the year. OK, good. We've got a question from sure. Chairman Taylor. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a quick, will you break down tier one, two, three defi definitions? What are they? Sure. So this was based on the Department of Community Affairs um, county rankings. So this is dependent on different economic factors like population, job growth, poverty level, those types of um, information. That's how those counties are ranked. And so an airport that would reside in those counties would have those tiers. And so a, a tier four is going to be something that has a, a lot higher economic ability, whereas a tier one would be much lower. All right. And I'm going to pass it off to Andrew here. He actually is building some tea hangers and can give a little perspective as far as a loan program would go for him. And we'll make it real quick. So I'm Andrew Weersma. It's good to be here. Sorry, I'm a little bit taller than Amber is. But uh, um, so at my airport up in Dalton, we're currently uh, designing some tea hangers. And, and to your point, um, there are different types of hangers. You've got your box and corporate hangers, and you've got your tea hangers. For us, our uh, engineer estimate is about 1.4 million for a 10 bay tea hanger. So it's a it's a little more than uh, it's about 140 thousand dollars per per bay, which is actually extremely high uh, compared to what it has been, say, three, four years ago. Um, but currently, this is what we're looking at. So just to give you a high-level uh, idea uh, of an amortization on a loan like this, um, if you had $1.4 million over 30 years at even 2%, uh, that's $5,175 a month just to service that loan. And so your rent per hanger is going to have to be at least $518 just to break even. Um, and then you still normally include electric, water, and maintenance on that facility within that price. So it really leaves you nothing left over to actually maintain the building. And that 518 is already over double what we're charging uh, right now. I think the uh, GDOT said that the average hangar rent uh, across the state is about $208 a month. Um, at my airport, it's probably averages close to 300, maybe 270 a month. Um, so that's a pretty significant increase on those new new buildings. Now, the last time we built buildings was back in 2008. So obviously, these would be brand new buildings, so it can justify the increase. But I think you know, hangar rent's going to have to come up to meet uh, these needs, and and it's a significant increase. And you're still just about breaking even when it's a 100% loan. Um, if you look at a 50-50 loan, obviously that cuts it in half and makes it a lot more doable. Uh, and you get about $2,600 left over per month on that building to maintain the building, you know, pay for electricity and water uh, and whatnot. So uh, just a high level look at what that looks like. I think um, communities across the state, there are some like we're seeing from our membership that can handle a 100% loan and it work well for their financial situation and their, their community. Um, but for a lot of the uh, smaller communities especially, uh, they were looking at a 50-50 match would really, really help them, uh, perhaps with a low interest loan for the local match share. Um, some of the other answers were 75-25 loan, uh, which is currently what GDOT is already uh, the, the split. This is a 75-25 split on GDOT funds. Um, so keeping it at that, but providing perhaps a, a low interest loan for the 25%. Um, so that's what we're looking at. Uh, but as Amber said, we want to continue that conversation throughout the coming year um, as the GDOT study comes out. And, and the study, I think, will drill down more into uh, that number, um, the $450 million for those hangers, that they're, the 1,400 hangers across the state. Uh, lastly, the height restriction bill. Um, we've been working on this. Uh, Senate Bill 326 was dropped last session just to sort of uh, start the uh, uh, communication on this and the conversation on this. Um, but basically, Georgia is one of three states in the nation that does not have uh, statewide height restriction laws in place. So there's a lot of local communities that have put height restriction laws in place to protect their airports. Um, but we're looking to do something statewide that would, would set a bar um, for airports to either uh, sort of meet that or exceed it with their own local regulations. Um, this year, we've put together a airspace protection subcommittee under the legislative committee at GAA. Um, we are soliciting a height restriction study uh, that we hope to complete uh, by September or October of this year. 
uh, to present a draft piece of legislation um, to the legislative body for next session. Uh, so hopefully we can move forward uh, with some legislation on this. Thank you for that. You do have a couple of questions. Representative Barton. You didn't have a question? Okay. Chairman Taylor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we had an issue come up um, last year in South Georgia being close to Moody Air Force Base. And is that going to be taken into consideration when you're looking at this? Because it put quite a hardship um, from Thomasville on our airport. And um, what can be done about that? Yes, so that's an issue that we lobbied very hard for last year, um, trying to get the Air Force to not move forward with the Moody Air, Air Force Base uh, MOA restrictions that they were looking at. Ultimately, we were able to get them to back down a little bit, um, which helped. I think, I think they came off of about eight airports that they were going to be over. Uh, and for anyone who doesn't know, they were lowering the uh, MOA, which is the military uh, operations areas, over those airports. They were bringing them down very, very low, uh, essentially just restricting that airspace. Uh, and it would effectively choke off a lot of these airports. Um, and the economic impact of these airports would be severely damaged. So uh, we lobbied very hard for them not to do that. Um, and like I said, they did back down, but unfortunately they, they are implementing that this year and uh, several airports, including Thomaston, I think they're, I think Thomaston is just outside of the MOA area, but it's very close. And so unfortunately they are gonna experience uh, those negative impacts. Um, Brooks County and the Moultrie Airport, are they going to still be, I guess they'll be hampered by it also? Yes, um, I mean, I think there's going to be a negative impact to that to that whole area. I think there's only three airports that are going to be directly under the MOA now. Um, but other airports in the close surrounding area, um, it can still affect their approaches as well. Um, I think the Air Force is, is saying that they want to work with us as much as possible in, in, in allowing aircraft to come in. Um, in and out on IFR flight plans, but we just don't know exactly how it's going to work out until until we implement that. Are there are there additional meetings coming up, or they're just going to make a decision and tell us? And, and was Thomasville excluded? Yes, I believe Thomasville was excluded. Um, they're just outside the new MOA area, I believe. That was the last that I heard too, but I didn't know if this is something new. Yes, so there's one meeting that we're working on scheduling this year, but it's it's basically just a meeting where they're going to. Uh, tell us, hey, it's a done deal, and this is how we're going to implement it, and then we're going to work as best we can to try to bring a smooth transition in, and that's all we can really do, unfortunately. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from the committee for our presenters? None? Okay. Thank you so much for being here, and we appreciate this information and, and look forward to working on this in the future with you all. We know it's a big need here in our state. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay, well we have got three Senate resolutions and two House bills on the agenda. We have one Senator that's here, Senator Hatcher, if you'd like to go ahead and come on up and present your resolution. This is the, this is the Senate's road naming resolution and you should have there um, information from the substitute that has um, additions from the house of the, where we did not quite make it early on in the process but we'll be handling that now so and also let me add Abby thank you so much for helping us out through the process as we've um, needed it to make sure that we get these important road namings uh, done in time so Senator Hatchett, it's all, all you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> I bring you Senate, <clears throat> excuse me, Senate Resolution 583. I learned a lot about myself and this building in, in filing this bill. Number one, I learned that there are a lot of roads that are dedicated and renamed, and there are a lot of bills that are dropped. But I also learned that there are a lot of bills that are dropped after one bill is dropped. 
to rename a road. So I made the mistake of being the very first one to drop a road naming bill, which is why my one bill or one road has turned into about 50. So uh, this is the omnibus road naming bill from the state Senate, and um, I would really greatly appreciate your favorable consideration. All right. You have, okay, we got a motion to pass. We have a second. Is there any discussion? None. Okay, all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say no. All right, motion carries. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Senator, for being here. See ya. Okay, we are in a position right now where we do not have senators in here to present these bills. However, just roll them. <laughs> okay, give me a moment here. Okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and take up these two Senate resolutions ourselves. One is uh, Leader Gooch's, no, not Leader, yeah, his um, Senate Resolution 609. Josh, are you able to speak to that bill? Just say your name. Would you? If you are able, sure. The resolution. It, it's, it's important to um, the people in North Georgia, and if you yeah, could explain that, that'd be great. Yeah, this is the leader's, uh, Leader Gooch's resolution to dedicate a roundabout at a, uh, where it used to be a historical marker, just recognizes the Princess Trolita. Um, let me get the name, the correct name. The Princess Trolita Circle, Circle of Princess Trolita at Stonepile Gap. Got it. Okay. Any questions? All right. Thank you. What's the will of the committee at this time? Okay. We have to pass. We have second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? No. It passes. All right, Senate Resolution 158. Is anyone familiar with uh, Senator Anavitarte's bill designating the Northwest Georgia Logistics Corridor as an official logistics growth corridor in Georgia? All right, we have a motion to pass. A second, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say no. All right, it passes. Okay, the last two items were hearing only and Chairman Jasper said that he would be fine with us postponing those. Um, I will say that I'm putting together a tour of the Gulfstream facility in Savannah in a couple of weeks. If any of you are interested in going, it'll be about a two hour tour and maybe lunch afterwards. So if you're interested in that, please let me know and I'll make sure I get you the information when I have the details. But otherwise, I think this is it. We have a, I'm trying to read Chairman Jasper's uh, notes. We have a committee survey that Carmen will get out to you later this week if you could fill that out. And uh, our lobbyists that are here that we work with, thank you so much for all you do in representing your, your, uh, your clients and their interests and, and all of you for, for being so diligent to be here and on this, this last committee day that we have. So thank you so much. And if there's nothing else, meeting adjourned. <laughs>